Coach, do you have any word on Eric and how he is? No, he'll, he'll get some scans today. He was actually moving a little bit better uh, this morning. He's still got the brace on, obviously. Looks quite dramatic. Uh, but um, we'll find out a little bit later today, I think, about what his, uh, about what his prospects are. Uh, fortunately, we've got until, until Sunday, so uh, still a few, few more days to go. But we won't be taking any risks with him. If he's not right, um, he'll have a rest. Um, I'm pretty sure... Though that whatever the outcome is, if he is out, he won't be out for too long. What's um, he said to you about it? If he's mentioned anything about it, like how he thinks it is. Uh, well, the f you know the fact that he was able to play out the game gives him a little bit of confidence. Um, he had a little bit of trouble on the change of direction, but his straight line running and ability to jump wasn't impeded. Um, he was quite upbeat about it this morning. So uh, um, often you can tell by the mood of the player. Um, but as I say, if he's if there's any doubt. We'll leave him out. Played, played out the game and played really well too, didn't he? Yeah, he did. It was um, a courageous effort by him. He was, he was injured. He got that injury quite early in the game. And uh, for him to be able to stay out there was important for us. You know, if, if he didn't, we're down to 21. Makes, makes, puts a bit more pressure on, the, on his teammates. Uh, and he played an important role just competing in the air, bringing the ball to the ground and managed to catch one and kick a good set shot goal in the third quarter, which was important at the time. What about Oscar? He obviously missed last week. Should he be right, or is he still going to be actually? No, Oscar will be fine. He, he actually passed his tests last week, to be truthful. Um, we just felt that it was a pretty heavy knock, and despite the fact that the tests were OK, that it was best for his welfare to, to have a week off this week and come back in fresh for next week. Because, I don't know, my experience with guys that get concussion is a lot of them pass the test, but they don't always play all that well because their reflexes aren't so good or, or their confidence is a little down. So we just wanted to make sure that he was OK. And, uh, he'll be available for selection this week, we already know that. How does the player take that? It's not a good time to go out of your team at the moment. No, he fully understood. He fully understood. Um, uh, so there was, no, there was no dramas there. Oscar's a great team man, so he, 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 he agreed with the decision. Jeez, mate, that's a, that's a nice luxury to have, isn't it, where you can sit a bike down for a week? have someone else come in and you still win and knock off the Giants or knock off any team. Yeah, yeah, it's, it seems it seems like a luxury, but we just didn't look at it that way. We're just more about, well, I don't, we don't reckon the player's right, so we're not going to play him. If he had been right, we would have. Um, uh, but, yeah, it is. We've got good depth at the moment. Uh, the the Neeful team's doing well, still hasn't lost a game. Um, uh, so pressure on for spots and, and good replacements um, when and if we need them. Are you any more or advanced quicker than you thought maybe at the start of the year or are you going about the, the right trajectory of what you, what you thought? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I thought it would improve. I just didn't know by how much and, and uh, never really put any, any limits on, on that um, because I sort of know what can happen in a footy season. Suddenly you can find some belief and, and really get going. So, uh, you know, I, I, I can't say whether whether we're in front of or behind where we thought we would be. I'm just pleased that we've, we've made the improvements that we have and that uh, we're well and truly in the, in the competition for final spots with, with you know, seven or eight rounds to play. Like, there's um, interesting discussion going on at the moment about draft picks and whether clubs should hang on to players longer than two years. What's your take on that? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a strong believer in the idea, in particular, that with your first round picks that that you should be able to hold on to them for three or four years. Um, and generally speaking, we try to recontract those guys pretty early in, in, in the piece. But uh, for me, when you when you make that call on a first rounder, I, I reckon you should have access to those players for a good length of time to get the maximum benefit from their talents and, and give them time to settle in. And I think it's particularly relevant for for, for clubs like us where you know a lot of our players have to move away from home. Gold Coast are in a similar boat. Um, you know, because it, it, it does take a while for them to settle down. So anything to help player retention, I think, is a good idea. But that would help the player too, wouldn't it, to sort of be through a system, the same system, rather than chopping and changing? Oh, it does, but some of the players and their managers don't think that. Some of them want to go up and leave pretty quickly, so uh, um, that might make logical sense, but that's not always what happens in football. For a club like Gold Coast, you mentioned, is an added priority pick enough for them to, to get them back up the ladder, or do they need more? Oh, I'm probably not the right person to, to comment on Gold Coast. Um, you know, th they've been really competitive for most of the year this year. They're just going through a bit of a tough patch at the moment, which you do with 
with young teams. But you know, I felt over the last couple of years that we would have benefited from an extra first round pick. Not, not so much uh, at the beginning of the draft. I'm not in, in agreement that, that any team should get pick one and pick two. But I think pick one if you're on the bottom and then an another pick at the end of uh, round one is, is, is not a bad little help to, to get the team up and moving. Um, but people just have to be patient, like development takes time, it has with our group, you know, a lot of guys like McCluggage and Berry and Witherden, you're starting to see now, become really good AFL players three and four years into their careers. Good Adelaide. Nice. Up a big wing down there in the back out too. Yeah, it's a huge game for them, the, the, uh, the, the showdown with, with Adelaide, and they've been in very good form uh, in the last three weeks, uh, beating Geelong uh, at that ground and then beating Adelaide. and the, they went down to the dogs, but as we know, the, the, the dogs form's pretty good as well. So uh, it wasn't by a huge margin and it was on a wet night. So, uh, uh, you know, if we thought the challenge against GWS was big, then it'll be even bigger this week. Uh, you know, they're fighting for a spot in the, in the top eight, as are we. Um, uh, so it should be a, a big game and something that we're looking forward to. And, you know, obviously we had a game up here against them earlier in the year, which we were able to win. It was a really close game, which could have gone either way, I reckon. Um, it's probably one of those ones that we'd say we were, we were somewhat fortunate to win. So no doubt they'll be looking for revenge, but I also feel like we've improved as a footy team since round three. So uh, it'll be good to test ourselves out in that environment. It's good to get them after the showdown, the fact that they would have whiffed for that. Oh, well, no, I, 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 knowing Ken Hinckley pretty well, um, I imagine he would have been saying to his players, because they've been a bit up and down this year, they've won one, lost one quite regularly, that's been their pattern. I would have thought that in, that, in his conversation with the team post the game, uh, he would have mentioned that fact and put them right back on the job for us this week. So uh, we're not, expe not expecting the, any uh, sort of uh, letdown from, from the game that they had last week. In fact, if anything, it would build their confidence up and make them all the more, all the more determined. About a month ago, mate, uh, a lot of people saying Lions can't win away from home. Um, you obviously firmly oppose that now. Last few weeks you've gone out and proved those uh, sayers wrong. Yeah, well, I, I opposed it because there was evidence to suggest that we could win away from home. We'd beaten North Melbourne away from home and uh, uh, we'd also beaten Gold Coast down on their ground, which is still an away game, even though it's in the same state. So I thought that was a little, a little unfair because our other losses on the road hadn't been by all that much. Uh, it's not like we'd been going away other than the Essendon game. Uh, the other games we've lost on the road were quite close. So uh, uh, it's good though to, that um, you know, my loyalty towards our players was backed up by, by more recent performances against um, St Kilda and GWSM. Look, one of the conversations we always have as a, as a, as a footy team is that if you, if you want to be a great team and you want to play finals, you have to win on the road. So uh, to be able to do that a couple of times in the last three weeks against good opponents who were fighting for spots, uh, either trying to get into the eight or fighting for a top four spot, which was the, the case with GWS, it's just exciting that we've been able to um, turn up and, and play as well as we have. And heading into this week's game, Charlie will play his 100th game. How much of a strength has he been this year? Uh, well, Charlie, you know, he's, um, as a small forward, he's one of the best in the game. He's, he's in, in all Australian form. He was really important for us on the weekend. Uh, he kicked two goals, uh, but on top of that, I reckon he set up three or four others with uh, great little centering passes. And uh, uh, he was, uh, you know, they had to move uh, Reid off Zorko um, at quarter time because Charlie was looking so dangerous and then Zork pops up. So uh, it's good to have players who uh, are weapons and uh, threaten the opposition because it causes uh, uh, their sides and their plans to be a little bit disturbed. So uh, Charlie's had a great year. Uh, it's fantastic that he's playing his 100th game back home in Adelaide and I'm sure the boys will, will, will lift for him. You've always said you wanted to play entertaining footy and Port seemed to like to do the same. Do you, can you see the like feel the excitement from the wider AFL community about this matchup on the weekend? Yeah, both teams will be trying to do that, no doubt, but both teams will be working overtime to try and stop the other team from doing that. So it'll be interesting to see whether whether it becomes a game of high scoring or, or, or it becomes a war of attrition. I'm not sure which way it will go, but I, I'm sure that neither of us coaches will care what the score is at the end or how many points we've kicked as, as long as we've got the W. So that'll be, that's, that's the major challenge. Thanks. One of the things over the last few weeks for you is sort of not letting the team get ahead of themselves and you don't want to talk about finals this early. But you guys aren't just finals contenders, right now you're sitting 
what's the balancing act like when you're trying to not let a team get ahead of themselves, but also build that confidence that if you finish top of the ladder, you, you're serious contenders. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't always be putting <clears> down expectation. Yeah, I understand your question, but I, as I've said many times this year, we just focus on the next game. Um, you know, I, I mentioned on the weekend that you've got to win 12 or 13 games to even make finals. We've got 10 at the moment, so why would we be thinking about top four? We're just thinking about next week trying to win enough games to get there. Um, that's our focus. Um, we're not going to move away from that. Uh, the process has served us well, and we'll continue to, to follow along those lines and We'll see where we are at the end of um, all the home and away uh, matches and you know, hopefully we're still somewhere where we are now but uh, it's too hard to predict. I know uh, our draw is a tough one, uh, you know, I've got Richmond to play, Geelong to play, Port to play at their home ground, North Melbourne and the Bulldogs are back in finals contention to play here so there's nothing easy coming up so uh, we'll stick to the one week at a time mantra.